Dayton artist Mike Elsa is known for putting his brush before his brain. His method of painting is as unique as his canvas of rusted sheet metal. By not thinking too hard about what he's painting, where the paint drips or even the direction the final piece will hang, he is able to immerse himself in a moment of light, texture, and color. Uh, I grew up in a small town north of here in Botkins, Ohio, and we didn't have art. I played uh, sports, baseball, basketball. I always enjoyed art, but we didn't have any classes or uh, no formal training. I went to school at Ohio University, a uh, journalism major, and uh, had no, uh, no formal training. Uh, then I uh, sold health insurance to schools and corporations. Uh, I was introduced to art by Roger Sayre. He was a well-known artist. I bought some of his art back in the 80s and met Roger. He painted on steel. Uh, got to know Roger and took a space at the Front Street warehouses where I became his studio assistant for three or four years. And I would go out on the road and take a load of steel in the back of my truck and, and paint it wherever I might be in the patina of the ocean spray or the desert or sun, rain, all added to the steel. I don't really know of anybody using weathered steel on a full-time basis. It's pretty gritty. For the recycled steel, a lot of it comes from a scrapyard just a quarter of a mile from here. It represents aging and imperfection and the trials and tribulations that, that we go through in life. The steel always is interesting because I don't know what its former life was or or where its brothers and sisters are going. And it's interesting, there's a lot of textures, imperfections, and different imagery that comes out of the steels. It also represents strength and durability. Some of my work you could stand on. I'm not sure that's much of a selling point. I pretty much paint brush before the brain which means I paint first and think about it later. Not worried about mistakes, not knowing which direction the piece is gonna hang. So I'm just enjoying the moment, being in the moment and getting into whatever textures and colors I might be using that day. I just love the color and texture, and I paint very texturally with a lot of texture. I use pumice, steel shavings, tar, silicate sand from local gravel pits, literally everything in the store. And uh, I just love the use of color and learning how to apply it and blend it with texture. I paint acrylic on steel, and then I finish it off with an oil which stops the oxidation. I paint so fast, so I'm painting on 20, 30 pieces at one time. I paint 30, 40, 50, 60 days on pieces, as opposed to a very short time frame. So I get different looks, different moods, different light, and it will come to you if you just let it be, if you don't try to push it. But so I paint real thin, almost watercolor-like, and so there's a lot of luminosity, depth down in the painting and in the steel. It kind of represents life and the different places and trials we've been exposed to. I think that's the biggest skill an abstract artist has, is knowing when to quit. And I think I get about one out of 15 that are really good, and I seem to know on those. The rest of them, it seems like I'm continually painting on them. If you don't worry about finishing it out and you just enjoy the moment, then it's not so critical to try to decide that. I do classes and they're called Brush Before the Brain and you paint first, you think about it later and there's no mistakes. I also have a charity side of things. I enjoy being able to donate to charities and have them either through a class or the artwork add value that way. So I'll probably do more charitable work. Well, I'm painting big pieces, 10-footers, triplicates that size, and I'm going organic. 
where I don't use as much paint and I use more of the elements of nature and texture. So I've been able to travel around and so my inspiration comes from different locations. Appreciation of just being alive and being able to paint and have spaces to paint in. 